10 a.m. I think I'm going to get started here. Um, so this morning I'll be presenting on POSIX, um, what it is, is it still relevant? Um, this is a high level presentation of POSIX, so it's not going to get into the code. Um, so I have no conflicts to declare. I'm not presenting on behalf of any organization today. Um, so I wanted to put that in. And also I'm doing a land acknowledgement today. So I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. That's the entire University of Ottawa. <clears throat> okay, so today's agenda will be what is POSIX, the history of POSIX, a little bit about the open group, and then I'll break for a little bit of questions and discussion at that point, and then I'll move on to the current certification and compliance landscape and the current state of POSIX in Canada, and then we'll break for another uh, question and discussion period. So I'm gonna start off today by acknowledging uh, Grace Murray Hopper. I'm wearing a, a shirt featuring Grace Hopper here, um, and uh, a great quote from uh, Grace Hopper, the wonderful thing about standards is that there are so many of them to choose from. Very famous quote. And I would add at this point that the wonderful thing about certifications is that they prove but don't disprove your compliance. So what is POSIX? It's the Portable Operating System Interface. But what really is it? So the, I, oops, the IEEE and the ISO um, define POSIX under the IEEE's uh, 1003 standard and the ISO defines POSIX under standard number uh, 9945. So it is recognized and it's the entire family of POSIX standards that are recognized under those codes. And how does the open group, who's currently in charge of POSIX, uh, define POSIX? They define POSIX as a standard operating system interface and environment, including a command interpreter, so that's a shell, uh, and common utility programs to support applications portability at the source code level. So if we have any beginners in the room, what this really means is that POSIX is a family of standards that help ensure operating system compatibility, uh, i.e. portability. So what would POSIX apply to? It would apply to the operating system interfaces, the utility interfaces, user application programming interfaces, those are APIs, and the command line shells. What is POSIX not? So that first one is just, just a joke, um, but it's, it's uh, not an inexpensive certification. Uh, no. And POSIX is not Unix. Um, that's a little bit of a, um, an assumption that they're the same, but they're not. Uh, it's also not Unix-like, and it is not Linux. Uh, the following areas are outside of the scope of POSIX, so this would be graphics interfaces, the de database management system interfaces, uh, record I.O. considerations, object or binary code portability, and system configuration and resource availability. So those are outside of the scope. So we get right into the history. So POSIX today, in 2024 is very mature. It's a very mature family of standards, uh, but it was once a baby. So where did it come from? So when POSIX was born, Unix was selected as the basis for a standard system interface due to its vendor neutrality. So this was in the mid 1980s. The standards rivalries, which were sometimes called the Unix wars, were leaving the entire Unix industry open to emerging competition from Microsoft. At that time, there are already several Unix systems. So again, that's the 1980s, and the origins of Unix date back to the 1960s. So POSIX came from a need to find a common denominator between these, which is really a set of standards. 
So Brian Kernahan and Rob Pike summarized the Unix philosophy as the idea that the power of a system comes from the relationships among programs rather than from the programs themselves. So I thought I would present a little bit on the background of the Unix philosophy as part of a presentation on POSIX. So the first release, that was in 1988. Um, it was produced, it was coming out of this, this uh, contention with Microsoft and this fear that Microsoft was gonna kind of take over. And it was then built on and refined through multiple projects. Uh, and you may have heard of COS. So that was the Common Open Software Environment. Um, that started in the 1990s, uh, but was very much related and helped to refine POSIX over time. So the Unix genealogy, I thought that this would be very interesting to present in this presentation um, because we see a little bit of a family tree here and we see people that we might recognize here um, and where BSD came from, but also the kind of common history between all of these. And even Microsoft was back there. Now, it did stop considerably um, and BSD kept moving forward but at one time, everyone shared a common history. So how did the open group get involved in POSIX? In October 1993, Novell, the company that owned the rights to the POSIX System 5 source at that time, transferred the trademarks of Unix to the open group. So that's how the open group originally get in, got involved and they are uh, helping to um, control POSIX to this day. So the open group, who are they? What do they do? So this is directly from their website and I just wanna basically read what they say about themselves. So they are leading the development of open vendor neutral IT standards and certifications. The Open Group is a global consortium that enables the achievement of business, of business objectives through IT standards. With more than 500 member organizations, they have a diverse membership that spans all sectors of the IT community, customer systems, solution suppliers, tool vendors, integrators and consultants, as well as academics and researchers and they help to capture, understand, and address current and emerging requirements and establish policies and share best practices. They facilitate interoperability, develop consensus, and evolve and integrate specifications and open source technologies. They offer a comprehensive set of services to enhance the operational efficiency of the consortia, and they operate the industry's premier certification service. Again, direct quote from them and more directly from their website. So what they do, they really do technology standards as they define it. Uh, so the open group works with customers and suppliers of technology products and services and with consortia and other standards organizations to capture, clarify, and integrate current and emerging requirements, establish standards and policies and share best practices. So their standards ensure openness, interoperability, and consensus. That's really what they're all about. Uh, so they collaborate with the IEEE for POSIX development and compliance. They collaborate with IEEE for POSIX trademark protection because POSIX is now protected under a trademark which the open group owns. Uh, so these are the open group's platinum members. And I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. Uh, so standards development maintained by the open group. So this was very interesting to me. Um, so in addition to POSIX, they also work around Archimate, TOGAF, uh, Unix of course, and the OTTPS standard. They also develop some professional certifications, most of which you've probably never heard of. Um, but these are really their main uh, standards. So these are their product, tool, and process certifications. Uh, and this is really what the open group is associated with at this point. So at this point, does anyone have any questions? Yes. So you're saying it's about technology. Yes. Definition part of this, or is that separate? 
that would be separate. So they're really kind of, a lot of these standards, Len, like Archimate, for example, um, is really focused on like blueprinting and diagramming. So these are kind of high level standards. Yes. It's a cybersecurity standard, I believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. Any other questions? Okay, we'll keep moving right along here. So the current certification and compliance landscape, what does that look like around POSIX? So POSIX certification, and again, guys, I am I am quoting right off of their website uh, because I don't want to add my own thoughts on this. I just want to tell it how the open group sees it and wants it represented. So advantages of Unix certification. The open group Unix standards offer the most stable, portable, and cost-effective applications development environment for a wide range of platforms, and that's from mobile devices to mainframes, for end-user enterprises, procuring certified Unix systems, uh, which ensures the highest level of availability, scalability, and maintainability for those who want to focus on their business with confidence in their IT. Unix certification is a trusted and open system industry standard, ensuring that products conform to the most exacting criteria for portability, compatibility, and global interoperability. This enables buyers to specify Unix conformance in procurements, facilitates boundaryless information flow, which is a concept that um, the open group has come up with, uh, and enhances the perception of the Unix system as a consistently stable, flexible, and reliable operating system. So again, right off their website, that's how they define it. What are the benefits for application developers and users? Oops. So the benefits for application developers include a guaranteed consistency of services and behavior amongst Unix operating system implementations, improved portability, backward compatibility, faster development through the increased number of standard inf interfaces, more innovation, potentially, uh, an evolutionary approach that protects investment in existing systems, data, and applications. The availability of Unix systems from multiple suppliers gives users freedom of choice rather than being locked into a single supplier. So those last two are really on the user side and the rest are directed towards uh, application developers. And this is again the open group promoting their various certifications including the Unix certification which is slightly different than POSIX. So why does POSIX often get written with a trademark symbol? POSIX is protected under a trademark license agreement, a TMLA. If you wish to use the POSIX trademark in association with your certified product, then you need to also uh, execute a trademark license agreement prior to any use of the POSIX trademark. The POSIX trademark license agreement is between you and the IEEE and requires signature. The POSIX trademark can be licensed for use with the following product standards and I'll get to those later on. Um, a visible notation of whether a product is licensed to use the POSIX trademark is carried on the certification registrar. So they do post this publicly. Uh, the trademark license agreement only needs to be entered into once per organization. When it is in place, multiple certified products can use the trademark without the need to execute another agreement with the IEEE. The trademark licensees with certified products receive a cer certificate for each applicable product. So which operating systems are currently POSIX certified? It's really these ones, these eight. So these are the ones that are officially POSIX certified. So it's, we see AIX, HP UX, HP Integrity. We see Mac OS, OpenServer, Unixware, uh, VXWorks, and ZOS. And these are the ones that 
have really gone through the process and also invested their money in this uh, to become officially certified. Which operating systems were formally certified? So I get this a lot, um, especially around uh, Euler OS, because people say often, well, Euler OS is a certified POSIX system. It used to be. That certification actually expired in 2022. Um, another interesting one on this list is QX, QNX Neutrino here. I actually don't know the status of QNX Neutrino with regards to POSIX, and it doesn't really seem like anyone does. So that's uh, <laughs> a bit of a, a question mark right now. Com yes, yes, yes. So I'll get to that too. Uh, so what standards does the core program of, oh my, okay, sorry about that. That's. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. So this, these are all the standards in the core program of POSIX, and you, oop, you get the point that this is, it's a lot. It's a lot. And the additional programs down here is where we actually find Unix. So Unix isn't a part of the core program. It's all these other standards. And we can see that some of these standards are for the C language. We have... COBOL in there, it's, uh, it's really quite a medley of standards, but um, these are considered additional programs and would not be part of the core program of POSIX. <clears throat> what are the associated costs? Um, it does have a reputation as being a, an expensive certification, and I think we can see that even just around the core program costs. Um, we see that it's, it is really quite expensive to get POSIX certified. And the full fee schedule can be seen here if anybody wants to see that. Um, some of the fees are very high. But here is an interesting point. If you're an open source project, you actually get a 12-month license period at no fee. So you could actually become POSIX certified for 12 months, officially certified, and there's no fee for that if you're open source. So this is a way that the open group is kind of encouraging open source products, projects, to become POSIX uh, certified officially. Which operating systems are currently POSIX compliant? So this is a very different list um, from the cert. cert uh, certified list. Oh no. Okay. Well, okay. So this is the list of compliant, and I might have missed a couple on there. Um, I really did try to tweeze out even the Illumos uh, systems, which are POSIX uh, compliant, not certified. So we see Open Indiana up there. I think Smart OS, yeah, it's right there. And of course, all of the BSDs. So there's Dragonfly, there's FreeBSD, there's NetBSD, there's OpenBSD. So all compliant, but not certified. So as of today, the IEEE uh, standard for POSIX Issue eight, that would be the most updated version, is in the process of being published. So that's what it says officially on their website. Um, it has not yet been published. So it's just kind of sitting in this gray area right now. What is the current state of POSIX in Canada? So this, I did want to just jump back to QNX Neutrino here because it is a very interesting case. Um, so this is actually what they say on the BlackBerry website. The QNX Neutrino real-time OS is 100% POSIX compliant and conforms to the POSIX PSE52 real-time controller uh, system product standard. It uses standard development tools such as the GNU compiler collection, uh, so Unix and Linux programs can be easily ported. That's what they say on the website. I don't know really what this means, especially this part. 
Um, because again, they're kind of sitting in a gray area around POSIX certification, but they're saying that they're 100% POSIX compliant. Uh, it, it's a really interesting case, in my opinion, um, and that's specifically uh, QNX, which is, of course, being used and developed by BlackBerry. I just want to jump over the, to the Canadian Common Criteria Scheme. It's a little bit off topic here, but I just want to introduce this here. It is a set of standards, so it's kind of on topic still, and I just, I found this really fascinating. So the Common Criteria um, and how it relates to QNX. Uh, so this is looking all on the QNX website and trying to understand um, QNX's relationship to POSIX brought me to this. QNX has been evaluated by the Canadian Common Criteria Scheme and deemed compliant with EAL 4 plus, Common Criteria Insurance Level Requirements. What does that mean? I had never heard of any of this. I, hadn't, I had never heard of the Canadian Common Criteria Scheme or the Common Criteria at all prior to this. So although my, my investigation was really into POSIX, this was a really interesting kind of aside. Um, so what is the Common Criteria? The Common Criteria is an international program in which accredited laboratories test IT products against cybersecurity specifications for technology classes. So this is moving outside of interoperability, uh, portability. This is really around cybersecurity. Um, under the Common Criteria Recognition Arrangement, that's the CCRA, all member countries, so this is international, agree to recognize each other's common criteria certificates, which allows developers to access the global marketplace regardless of where their product is certified. Developers contract a testing laboratory to evaluate their product against a security specification designed by a technical community under a national certification body who performs technical oversight and pub publishes the result of the evaluation effort, which is internationally recognized. I had never heard of this before, um, but now I'm in touch with the uh, representative from cyber.gc.ca who is part of this common criteria development for Canada and I'm trying to learn more about this and its relationship to POSIX because it's another international standard and again, very focused on cybersecurity and it's really interesting. So I did my own little exploration around Tibbets um, at the Government of Canada because Tibbets was uh, the standard that specified POSIX. So I actually reached out to Shared Services Canada um, and I asked them about this, and this is where they pointed me to. Uh, Appendix C, Approved Information and Technology Standards, so that's Tibbets, um, and these three standards specifically. So that's 7.0, the Guide to POSIX Open System Environment. It's Tibbets 7.1, the Portable Operating System Interface for Computers, so that's POSIX, and Tibbets 7.2, that's the Portable Operating System Interface, uh, POSIX, which would just apply to the shell and utilities at that point. So those are the main sort of specific policies and standards of the Government of Canada around POSIX. Now, unfortunately, this has all been rescinded. Uh, they didn't specify that when they provided that information. So again, they provided all this information to me and they didn't let me know that none of this technically applies anymore and has all been rescinded and didn't give any background uh, around that. But it has, it's all been rescinded. Uh, this entire policy, the management of information technology policy is uh, rescinded at the Government of Canada. And I don't know if anybody's working on it or updating it or how it applies any further. Um, so this entire page, uh, it's not just the Tibbet standards, it's the entire policy. So it's that management of information technology policy. It's all archived. It has all been rescinded. So. <laughs> So I'm, I'm still unsure as to why they pointed me at this, um, but this is the current state in Canada. Um, 
yeah, it was. It, they had a very specific policy at one point, uh, and they saw a lot of value in POSIX, and they have since rescinded it. And yeah. <laughs> So this was my response. <laughs> so I said, thank you for this information. It is great to see that those tibets are still in active use and haven't been rescinded. They have been rescinded, but they weren't clear about that. So this is how I responded. As you, as you are a gener general information point of contact, because they were very clear about that, that they're not experts, I do not expect you to be able to field my specific POSIX questions. Uh, which department would I be best to send these questions to? You know, one might assume Shared Services Canada, they're the IT folks, but no, they sent me back to the Treasury Board. So <laughs> I really don't know. This is sitting in a gray area. They're kind of doing some finger pointing between different departments, and really at this point, I don't want to be involved in that. So my key takeaways around all of this, um, POSIX is not a single standard. It's a family of standards. It's that huge list of standards. Uh, it has been around for a long time. It was released in 1988. I think we can say at this point that it's a mature set of standards. There has been several iterations. And as I mentioned, right now we're sitting on the uh, waiting for the next iteration. Uh, it itself is trademarked. Uh, and that trademark is protected by the IEEE. Uh, the major commercial Unix versions are certified. So as we saw, AIX, um, HP, Mac OS, they are certified. There is a large monetary investment to become POSIX certified. So that definitely um, introduces uh, some barriers. There is a free option for open source projects, however. Uh, it did help us get through the Unix wars. And POSIX is not Unix. Those are different sets of standards. But they are closely related. So standards don't work alone. Um, and I've just listed some other international standards here. Uh, some of these are, actually a lot of these are healthcare specific um, because my background is in healthcare and healthcare standards. So we can see SNOMED, HL7 International, these are healthcare standards, and of course the International Classification of Diseases, that's ICD. Uh, so those are all around healthcare, but we also have the standards set by IEEE, ISO, the Open Group, the Wireless Power Consortium, and how do these all work together? Um, in my opinion, I think standards should have a top-down approach. So they should start at an international scope and then be brought into kind of a, a domestic and locally applicable uh, set of standards. Um, but I do think that they should all be related to international standards and, and still conforming largely so that you can do international analyses. Um, so what we've seen in Canada, for example, uh, is that Certain organizations have developed their own set of ICD standards, for example. Another uh, set of standards would be CCI, the Canadian Classification of Interventions. And these aren't really comparable at this point with international bodies or contexts. We've kind of done our own thing. Um, and I'm a little bit worried that's where we're headed here in Canada, so we're not taking that approach of taking POSIX at an international level and bringing it into a locally um, applicable uh, set of standards. Um, I think we've just kind of ditched it, and I'm not exactly sure why that's happened, uh, but that seems to be, given all of those rescinded policies, that seems to be the current state. And this here is a picture of my mom and her uh, her dragon boat crew here. So they're all breast cancer survivors. And uh, I thought I would put this in because to me, that's a real picture of, of teamwork. And, and that's really what standards are, right? These are all different types of standards that all work together. What is the Austin group? So if you do a search for POSIX, sometimes you'll see this group, the Austin group, coming up. And I had no idea. I had never heard of this group before. But they're a joint working group. And it's actually between the IEEE, the ISO, and the open group. So it's all of these bodies that are collaborating to bring us POSIX. 
So it is a very collaborative effort at this point in 2024. And I just wanna circle back to, around to the fact that this policy that contained the POSIC specific standards in Canada, the management of information technology policy is currently in a rescinded state. So, I mean, and, and you can probably tell this is bothersome for me personally, um, but this is, this is the current state in Canada. So thank you all for attending this presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, that would be an amazing one. Thank you. Okay. Working? So you mentioned that there's um, support for open source products. And yes. That you can get a 12 month certification. Yes. What happens at the end of the 12 months? I think at that point they do start charging, but I think that's a conversation that would be worth having. Right. I mean, can you just do another one? 12 more months? Maybe, maybe you, you know, change the name of your project. It's, it's hard to say, but that's a really good point. Really good question. I was gonna, my question was about that. I went to the FAQ that you pointed in your slides and couldn't find a link to that program. So if, ah. uh, if I could get that later, yes. that would be great. Yes, I can okay. send that to you, Warner. Okay. So who's next? Over here. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Uh, there was a slide where uh, it says something about C language and C language V2. Is that yes. like KNRC and like NCC? Like what's the, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, I, could, I could definitely clarify. Uh, I could reach out to the open group and ask them because it really is, it's a whole set of standards and they have about four that are specific to the C programming language. So I'm not sure which version of C or, or deeper than that. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't think in that list they, uh, they say C++. But they do mention COBOL. <laughs> Hi, uh, I, sorry, I might have missed this during uh, the presentation, but the um, policy that's been rescinded, uh, wh what's the office or what's the body that, that sets and rescinds those sorts of policies and what can you tell us about the process for rescinding or setting policy? Yeah, so that really would be the Treasury Board. Um, so they would have initially made that management of information technology policy and presumably they would have checked with Shared Services Canada and gotten some input around that policy, but I'm really not sure how much input they received, but I'm hoping that they reached out, but uh, it really is the Treasury Board Secretariat. It's TBS that's formulating and updating. Uh, 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 just, just jumping back, uh, um, um, POSIX does uh, C99, not, not the later versions of, of C, and it does not do C++. Oh, okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I think the latest version that she said is being um, drafted right now. Right. Updates the C++, or the C version to. It's actually under final vote. Yeah, under it's final under vote. Thank oh, you. okay. So, so it, it updates it to a newer version. I forget which one. Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, so this is a really, um, a, a current uh, standard, uh, standard set of, uh, standard family that's being formed and improved upon. Uh, it's very current. Uh, I was just wondering if you knew where to get the, the unreleased upcoming version that they're, they're voting on, if, if, uh, I've seen the existing one, but not, not the new one that's under vote. 
you have to join the Austin group. And if you join the Austin group, which is free, um, you join their mailing list and select no email, you can then download the draft standard, at least until the balloting is done. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. I just did this about three months ago. So to oh. It, so. And Warner, anyone can join the Austin group? Yep. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I haven't like contributed to POSIX, but I've been lurking because I have an interest in the context of our work on Cherry. Um, right. One of the things that I found really interesting about what POSIX does for, you know, in, in the Unixy sense, um, is that they standardize things that are common practice. Right. So they don't make new things. One thing that tells me is that if we have things that we see that we're sort of like Linux, but not quite, we should probably try to come to agreement so that they can be standardized. Yes. Or, you know, the BSDs should get together and, you know, form a block doing yes. set things fairly similar. Like I, one of the things I'll complain about in my talk um, in the next session is that like POSIX barely specifies that map. Um, yeah. And so there's all these extensions that are required to do anything useful and everybody's a little weird and different. Mm -hmm. um, and POSIX basically won't touch it because everyone's weird and different. So there's no common commonality beyond what's already there. Right. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. And the idea of kind of forming a consortia between all of the BSDs uh, to get POSIX uh, cer certification would be a very interesting approach. If, if you do anything on that, add me to the list. Please add me to the list, too. <laughs> so, along those <laughs> so along those lines, yesterday at the Open ZFS FA, a um, line of question came up that twigged the interfaces that are defined look to me to be more like user level interfaces, but they're also system level interfaces. And it seems to me that these are what the users see, mm -hmm. but the sysadmins need far more capability. And if you look at any particular command, there are switches in there that are not consistent between different distributions. Right. But it's still POSIX compliant because the users see the same thing, the same switches, whatever. But at the sysadmin level, you need finer grain control and this BSD may put dash capital L, and where have we seen that? For a different BSD that used dash lowercase L, or a different letter entirely for the same thing. So is it fair to say these standards affect what the users see, not necessarily the underneath life of a uh, uh, sysadmin? Yeah, definitely. I think these standards really apply to, to the user, um, but also to the developer in some cases. Um, but yeah, a big emphasis on the user. Thank you, Warner. Um, so seeing the, the question posed here in the title, what, what's your opinion on the relevance of POSIX today? I mean, so for me, I, I do await seeing what they come out with uh, in the next round of standards uh, to really be able to make a decision for myself around relevance. Um, the government of Canada is basically making a point from rescinding the standard that it's no longer relevant. That's the impression I'm getting from the government of Canada, that it's no longer relevant. Uh, that's not shared by me. Um, my opinion differs. But I really think it is a bit of a waiting game right now to see what they, they launch with the next set of standards. So, and, sorry. Uh, so them rescinding that policy, does it essentially open the door to other types of systems or systems that are compliant but not certified or what do you what do you think it changes i guess what i think it's opening the door for is a set of 
Canadian standards, and we've seen this happen in Canada where they kind of uh, use a mapping exercise to take something like the International Classification of Diseases, the ICD standards, um, to kind of make a, a domestic set of standards that apply specifically to Canada. And honestly, I'm, I'm worried that that's what's happening with POSIX. Yeah. Because it's just extra work for maybe yeah. the same result. It is, yeah. Yeah, but what would they uh, uh, replace POSIX by if this song? Pardon me, Renee? Uh, so if they, they, if they won't, wouldn't continue with POSIX, then what would they use instead? If they stop using POSIX at the Government of Canada, what will they use? Um, I think, Renee, that's where we get into them developing their own domestic Canadian set of standards, and I'm, I'm pretty concerned about that, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, and as we've seen in the talk, I mean, POSIX standards have been refined over time, being introduced in 1988, and there's been several versions. We're waiting on the next version. I mean, there's an iterative approach here. It's not just a brand new set of standards, so that's, that's what I'm worried about. Yep. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, probably negative implications for Canada and the Canadian market at that point. Yeah. Are there other thoughts or questions, or would anyone like to see one of the slides again? Yeah, can you please go back to your quote about um, certification? Sure. I need a picture of that in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my apologies. Was it? This one here. Oh. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, and I, I think this really is a, a true point that comes out of all of this, right? Because I mean, we saw that list of systems that are not certified, but they are compliant. So this is where we're getting into a little bit of uh, semantics, shall we say? Any other thoughts or questions, or would anyone like to see one of the slides again? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>